What's a single girl like you doing around this big house? I assure you, I'm married to a man, a human one. Wanda. Aren't we a fine pair? I want us to fit in. Is this really happening? Something's wrong here. Are you here to help us? <laughs> we just don't know what to expect. We are an unusual couple. Oh, I don't think that was ever in question. We just don't know what to expect. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Marvel dropped another new WandaVision trailer with a bunch more X-Men and Mutants Easter eggs, especially with their twins. So I'll explain what's going on and how they're using the series to introduce new X-Men characters to the MCU and how that's leading up to a big Young Avengers crossover with the other stuff that they just announced with all those other characters. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I will be doing WandaVision episodes starting in January, obviously. There'll be more stuff coming up, too. They just announced some bonus episodes for this series called Marvel Legends. Those are both dropping the week before WandaVision starts, January 8th, and they'll just be bonus episodes for Scarlet Witch and Vision's characters in the MCU. So I'll probably do some videos for that stuff, too. Kevin Feige told a joke a little while ago about Scarlet Witch and Vision saying that they're the two most powerful MCU characters with the most ill-defined powers. That's a good thing and a bad thing. He was making fun of what they've done with those characters in the past, the lack of character development that they've given them. But the good part of that is that he's saying it gives them the wiggle room to backdoor explain mutants and X-Men stuff in the MCU heading into Marvel Phase 4 and Phase 5 and get really trippy with the way they tell their story and have it all make sense without breaking their own continuity. Like Scarlet Witch using the MCU equivalent of her chaos magic to change this bubble alternate reality that's playing out like a TV show and they can say, well, we never said she couldn't do that. So they're using that to sew together all this upcoming X-Men stuff that they're laying the track work for right now and the multiverse or Spider-Verse story, depending on which Marvel Phase 4 movie you're talking about. Big shout out for Spider-Man 3, which based on all the characters that have been announced in the past two weeks, sounds like it's going to be even bigger than Avengers Endgame. I am sure the memes for that movie will be off the charts. Am I not supposed to have what I want? What I need? There are a bunch of new scenes in this new trailer of them holding their twins as children. It's Wiccan and Speed or Billy and Tommy, which are their actual names that they'll probably just call them during the series. Wiccan has magic-based abilities, as the name implies, like Scarlet Witch. Speed has Quicksilver-like abilities, as his name implies. And speaking of Quicksilver, everyone wondering if he's going to cameo on the series. There was an audition scene for older versions of the twins when they grow up a little bit where they talk about a quote-unquote uncle that they're trying not to disturb in the other room. So because Elizabeth Olsen and Kevin Feige and everyone else has said that they're using this series to tell all the story and deal with all the things in Scarlet Witch's past that they haven't dealt with yet, like they kind of brush over her character in a lot of the Avengers movies, it would make sense that they would address her grief over the loss of her brother during this series so they would mention him even if he doesn't appear on screen. So there'll probably be some Quicksilver stuff happening during the series. There have been a lot of rumors about how they do that or which characters they introduce or which actors they bring on the series. We'll just find out when they drop the episodes. You also see another scene with grown-up versions of the twins going outside with Scarlet Witch in this scene here. It looks like they're in the 80s or 90s based on the model of car in their driveway and they're just walking outside behind her. 
Then when they jump to what seems like present day, like they're going through the decades, they finally get to present day. They're looking out the window, all worried about fighting for their alternate reality because it seems like Sword, Randall Park's character, Darcy, all the other people that are working with Nick Fury are freaking out about what Scarlet Witch is doing. Like, who's doing this to you? The funny thing about that twist is that they actually think that she's being hurt or forced to do this by someone else. They don't know yet at this point that she's doing it to herself. But if you look in the background of this scene here, you can actually see a family photo with a faint outline of the twins who at this point are fully grown. The whole point, as you probably guessed, in aging them up so quickly using Scarlet Witch's powers and the trippy way time moves in her alternate reality is so that they can eventually do a Young Avengers crossover story with the other new members of the team they're introducing through the other series the next couple of years. During the Disney investor meeting, they announced those 10 new shows that they're going to drop on Disney Plus in the next couple of years. Based on the characters they're introducing, there should be no doubt that regardless of what they decide to call it or where they decide to drop it or whatever form it takes, there is a Young Avengers type of group that's coming up. So it sounds like Marvel's doing the same thing in putting that team together that they did with the original Avengers during Phase 1. Like you do each of them in their own movies, their own projects, then eventually, once they're all introduced, they all team up. Right now, if we're just talking about the younger characters, like teenage, very young characters, the roster would be Wiccan and Speed from WandaVision, Cassie Lang from Ant-Man 3, which has now been recast as Catherine Newton. You probably remember her from something pretty recently. Miss Marvel from her series, those episodes are actually going to drop later in 2021. Then Kate Bishop Hawkeye, played by Haley Steinfeld, you've all seen the pictures of her. Those episodes will also drop later in 2021. We have America Chavez from Doctor Strange 2, and then Riri Williams from the Ironheart series they just announced. Now, the list doesn't include other teenage characters in the MCU right now, like Spider-Man. He's still technically a teenager, but he was given membership as an A-list Avenger during Avengers Infinity War, so I don't really think of him as a young Avenger. The rumor right now is that Sony has already renewed the sharing deal with Marvel again, and obviously that'll lead to more cameos for Spider-Man in other Marvel Phase 5 movies way down the road. Like, Spider-Man 3 might wind up being the last MCU Spider-Man solo movie, but it's not the end of Tom Holland in the MCU as Spider-Man. Spider-Man will just cross over into other people's movies as a big character, like in Avengers 5 or other potential movies like the Fantastic Four movie, because the director he's been working with for the past 6-7 years, John Watts, is directing the new Fantastic Four movie. There was even a Fantastic Four Easter egg at the old Avengers Tower. When he comes down, there's this construction sign heralding the coming of the Fantastic Four in Marvel Phase 4, Marvel Phase 5. We can't wait to show you what comes next. The whole thing with X-Men and mutants, though, is that Marvel is actually introducing new X-Men characters in a number of different ways in the next several years. So there's no one single explanation for where X-Men come from in the MCU. It's a combination of wish it, dream it, make it real with your magic, which is what Scarlet Witch is doing with her children. Those are X-Men characters. It's them playing on the idea that her children in the comics weren't real. They were fake. But in the series, they fight for their reality. So she probably finds a way to bring them outside of this bubble reality into the main MCU reality. Then there's the X-Men multiverse explainer, pre-existing characters from the Fox movies coming back for cameos. Like they've already confirmed that Ryan Reynolds is going to come into the MCU as Deadpool eventually. Then you have the more complicated Eternals explainer that they'll get into during that movie, like Celestials messing with humans in planet Earth, and then eventually leading to humans evolving the X-Gene. Like, X-Men have been here this whole time, we just haven't seen them because a lot of their powers, the X-Gene, have not manifested yet. Really good example of that is Kevin Feige told a story a long time ago where he said that he tried to get a Hugh Jackman Wolverine cameo in Captain America the First Avenger way back in Marvel Phase 1. Because Wolverine is a very old character, he fought in World War II before he became Wolverine when he still had the bone claws. Also before this, Kevin Feige also introduced the Weapons Plus program through the Incredible Hulk and Thunderbolt Ross. That's actually coming back around again during Falcon and Winter Soldier with the Super Soldier Serum. I'll talk about that when we get to the Falcon and Winter Soldier episodes. But Weapons Plus is the program that Weapon X, or Weapon 10, comes from. Weapon X is just the 10th iteration of the Weapons Plus program. So it's just a way for them to slowly introduce these characters and say, see, they've been here this whole time. You just haven't seen them till now. And like I just talked about that Fantastic Four Easter egg in Spider-Man Far From Home, they're doing the exact same thing with the new MCU version of Fantastic Four. We're going to start getting Kang the Conqueror through the Loki series in Ant-Man 3. His real name is Nathaniel Richards. He's the descendant of Reed Richards. So if he exists, that consequently means that Reed Richards exists in the MCU. So everyone let me know in the comments if you spotted any of the big X-Men or Mutants Easter eggs in the WandaVision trailer so far. 
We'll get a couple more trailers for that before the series actually gets here. My next video will be for The Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 8 that'll post on Friday just like normal. It's the finale, so make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss that. There'll be a lot of big stuff coming up. I feel like I'm still missing a lot of the news that they announced last week. There was so much of it, there's just no way that I could do all the videos in a single week. So everybody get hyped for 2021. It already looks like it's going to be so much better than 2020. Everyone click here for my Loki trailer video, Easter eggs, and all the other Marvel trailers from this past week. And click here for my brand new Mandalorian Season 2 video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.